Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are continuing our 2023 external exam series for Queensland, Australia. And this particular video is multiple choice questions, four of them in fact, on bivariate data. Let's get right into it. Question one, a linear association with a correlation coefficient of 0.23 is best described as, and we've got some choices, weak positive, weak negative, strong positive, and strong negative. So first of all, we just need to unpack the question a little bit, try not to rush too fast. Firstly, we know it's a linear association, so that means a line of least squared regression um, would be plotted through the scatter plot. And a correlation coefficient is also known as Pearson's correlation coefficient, or it's the value for R. Now, if you would recall, your textbook may have shown you some sort of a scale like this for R. They do vary a little bit from textbook to textbook and from source to source, but it's approximately around here. So we now know that it's 0.23. So let's find that here on the scale. That's about there, which tells us in that's in the range of no linear association at all. However, that's not even a choice. So it says here best described. So the next best option is weak positive linear, um, which is our answer A. Question five powering through these. A scatter plot is created to identify the nature of the relationship between two variables, vehicle age and distance travelled. So we're looking at a car or a truck of some kind and we're looking at two variables. We would typically plot on the x-axis um, the explanatory variable and the clue there is the x in the word explanatory and it has an impact of some kind on the y-axis or the response variable. So we need to have a think about vehicle age and distance traveled. What has the effect on the other variable? We know that there will be other things that would also affect the other variable as well. So if we look at a car's age, we would expect a car that was maybe two weeks old would not have driven very, very far. I mean, there would be situations where maybe you've purchased a car straight off the lot and then driven it right across Europe or Australia. Yeah, that would be um, an unusual situation though. Most of the time, the older the car gets, the further it goes. So that would mean that our explanatory variable should be on the x-axis, which is the vehicle age, and our distance traveled should be on the y-axis being our response variable. So let's now have a look, now that we've worked that out for ourselves, which statement's correct. Now this first one here, the vertical axis should show the vehicle age as the response variable. Now we've just said no to that one. We've said that the vertical axis, which is your Y axis, should have distance traveled on it. The next one, the horizontal axis, that's this axis, the X axis, should show vehicle age as the explanatory variable. Now we've already said that the vehicle age um, should go on the X axis, so that's already a first. And that's our explanatory variable, so that's our correct answer, B. Let's have a quick look at the other options. It's always good not to be too hasty and just have a look at the other options first. So this, it also says the horizontal axis should so, show distance travelled. So we know that's not correct. And also the horizontal axis is not the response variable. Let's get rid of that option because that's the explanatory variable. And the vertical axis, yes, should show distance travelled, yes. But that's not our explanatory variable, that's our response variable, which means B, our second gut feeling, was correct. Question seven, which statement's always true for a causal relationship between an explanatory variable and a response variable? Now they're really testing on this paper our understanding of some key bivariate data concepts on here. So really language is a really important component of these questions. So a causal relationship, a causal relationship is one where one variable has an effect on the other. The explanatory has a definite effect on the response variable. Now down here, it's saying one of the variables is a confounding variable. Now a confounding variable is typically one of those other variables that we aren't looking at in the situation. So um, it's, a, it's a variable that um, causes the correlation to be weaker. Now in this particular case, um, occasion, we're told that one is causing the other. It's a causal relationship. So they can't be confounding variables. Let's um, eliminate that particular option there. The next one says the relationship is explained by a third variable, but that's the same thing as a confounding variable. We've already been told that one's causing the other, so that one is out as well. The next thing says there's a positive association between the variables. Now that's not always going to be true. Sometimes you can have a causal relationship where there is a negative association. 
For example, the more distance you travel in a car, you might be expecting the car's value to go down. So as one goes up, the other goes down. That's a negative relationship. So that's a possibility as well. So that rules out C because positive or negative um, could be true for a causal relationship. The last one is, is the response variable is dependent on the explanatory variable. And that's what we said at the very beginning. That's what a causal relationship is. The explanatory variable is causing or having an effect on the response variable, which means it's dependent on the other one, which means that's our answer, D. Last one, question 14. A calculator is used to determine the equation of the least squares line for the plant growth in the table. So that means we actually need to pull our calculator out. Now, as you know, the Casio is my favorite calculator. It's just the one I'm really familiar with. I am aware that there's lots of other different calculators out on the market. So you should be familiar with what your calculator does, but I'm gonna to demonstrate today on a Casio. So now I've got my calculator ready. I'm gonna go into mode setup at the top here and click two for statistics. And number two, because it's the equation of a line, y equals a plus bx. And now I'm going to put my data in. And back up to the top there, my x values, or the value for d, the number of days. And then I'm going to put in the next one. And all clear that. Now, before I did that, I should have had a quick inspection because there's no X and Y here. Typically X would be on the top and Y would be on the bottom. And in this case, we don't have that. So we wanted to be careful that we um, have the explanatory variable and the response variable sorted out properly. So if I'm thinking about this, this is plant growth data. I would expect that the more days that happen, the height of the plant's gonna get bigger. So the number of days has the effect on the height of the plant, which means this is our explanatory variable. That is our response variable. So let's all clear over here. We've put those in the right order. Sometimes in exams, they trick you and flip them back to front. So always do a little check for that. Shift one, and I want five for regression. Now here's the thing. We've got letters that are different to letters we're familiar with. We've got D and we've got H. Now we've already said this is the X value and this is the Y value. So our equation is Y equals A plus BX. So the subject of our equation should be the H value. So that means that we can already look here at H and H. They are B and D are our only good options there. So we're now looking to see what the value of A and B is. Now remember, a B, so we've got a choice basically of A and C. We've only really got to look for one of them We're, and work out whether it's 5.7 or 0 0.6. We don't have to go to a whole lot of work there. So what I'm going to do is just recognize that the equation is Y equals A plus BX. You'll notice that in this equation here and this equation here, we've got this standalone number at the end the constant, and we've got this one here, which has a coefficient for D. Now, this here is the B value. That's the B value there, because it's attached to the letter. And this one here is the standalone, so that's our A value. So if we jump on here now and look at the A value, we can see it's 5.7. So we've already ruled out A and C. We know the answer must be B. Well, did you find this video helpful? I sure hope you did. And if you did, here's how you can engage further with us here at McClutchy Mass. Firstly, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when the next video is available. You could tell someone about the video. Why not tell us in the comments if you found it helpful? You could share it with a friend or even with your class. Even put it on your class as one note. You could follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. And also, why not consider super like? Look for that dot, dot, dot button up the top near the notification bell. And why not consider giving back a buck or two to the channel if we've saved you some time? If you've got any questions at all, you can reach me here at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Don't forget to jump onto our partner's website, exam-insights.com. This is your one-stop shop for all of the 2023 and previous year's exams and exam solutions. It's a wonderful free resource for students and teachers. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.